Hi, this next video was taken at the Travel Inn in Duffield, Virginia. Also, part of the video was taken as I walked down the sidewalk. As I said in the video, the Travel Inn appears to have been taken over by mostly homeless people and vagrants. Um, that sounds harsh, I know, but basically that's what it looks like. Maybe drug addicts, I'm not sure. I noticed that on their marquee that it says they're under new ownership and they offer weekly rates. When I drove around the back side of the building, I noticed a lot of cars that that did not look like, none of them looked like travelers. I saw some of the people outside. One guy was yelling at another guy down, way down the way, you know, at the motel. It is a motel. I don't know if these motel rooms are efficiencies or not. I, I don't know. I know I have been here before and I've asked them for their rates. He was kind of expensive, so I opted not to stay. And and the reason I went to the Travel Inn was to do the video and 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 just kind of you know let her, you know let you know I, I used to park at, behind the Travel Inn way back a few years ago when there was nobody there it, it 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 was open but there were very few people that would come in during the week and I could park at the back side of the building and sleep and a few times I did that and for whatever reason that was before I liked to go I did not like going to truck stops anyway. Which is crazy because there's like a truck stop just right around the corner. So I, I don't know why. I, I, I don't know why I did that. But anyway, back in the day I would park there, sleep. And then in the morning I would wake up and go to, uh, I guess there's a gap marathon gas station around the corner. Anyway, when you first pull, when I first pulled into the travel inn, I thought it was the same. Nobody there. But then when I drove around the side and the back of the building, I noticed that there's a lot of cars there that I, I really didn't get a chance to look at the tags. Um, uh, the people, they look pretty rough. The people in the air, people in this motel that are staying there, I guess, weekly, whatever, they look rough. And I went to the back and I started doing a video and I heard one guy screaming and I just said, you know what, I'm not going to hang around here because this doesn't seem like a very good area which is kind of crazy Duffield's it's a tiny little place but and then as I was leaving I noticed that a lot of the cars looked crappy they they did not look like you know I didn't even look at the tags I didn't get a chance but they didn't look like cars of belonging to people that were on the road traveling and there were far too many way too many there it's a weeknight there would never be this many people parked at a travel in during the week traveling through this area because it's a very tiny area it's not on the interstate it is a kind of like a little expressway but it's just a u.s highway it's not a not an interstate not an expressway really anyway and then as i was leaving i saw another guy with a little dog and he didn't look like someone who was a traveler i saw a couple of the guys standing outside and they did not look like people with a track you know that were travelers and as I went in, I saw, dra drove around the side of the building, I noticed another guy sitting outside in a, like a lawn chair, I guess, or some kind of chair. And that's not what people, at least in my experience, that's not what people do that are traveling and get a motel for the night. They don't do that. They're, they're, they're travelers, they're tired, they book the room, they go in, they watch a little TV, whatever, maybe order a pizza, maybe get something to eat, and then they go to sleep. They, None of that sitting outside, you know, I mean, I guess they could if they wanted, but who would carry a lawn chair with them? I mean, you know, now I know that a lot of the campers do, car campers and such do, but none of these vehicles were vans or campers or, you know, SUVs or car camping types either. They were, I hate to say it, they're, it's basically been taken over, in my opinion, now I could be wrong, but in my opinion, the people I saw and from the looks of the building and the looks of the cars, it appears to have been taken over mostly by homeless people and vagrants. Now, I know that sounds harsh, and if the owner of this, whatever, that place ever sees this video, I'm sure he's going to disagree heavily, but whatever. That's what he's running. He's just running a motel for homeless vagrants and probably drug addicts. Okay, I am here at the old Travel Inn here in Duffield, Virginia. I used to 
there used to be nobody here. I think this place is now kind of like, I think a lot of people kind of live here now, maybe. I used to come here and there used to be nobody here ever and he was too expensive for a motel room. And I would come here and I would park right over here where I'm parked, just behind me, and I would sleep here. And then in the morning I'd get up and I'd go around the corner to a gas station. And there used to be nobody here. Nobody. Okay, this is the front side of the motel, and it looks like there's a lot of people that live here now, that not travelers. Okay, Duffield really hasn't grown up all that much, and it doesn't look much better or that much different than it did 14 years ago when I first came here. The only difference is that the Travel Inn says it's under new ownership. Yeah, under new ownership, letting people, I don't know, just letting them stay there because it says something on their sign a week that they can um, rent the rooms for like a week or something. So I'm going to walk. I'm going to do a little bit of walking. And I, I did a little bit of video on the front, as you saw, but not much. I tried to do a little bit at the back. And when I did, I don't know, there was some guy out there yelling at, I don't know, his neighbor. I know one thing for sure. I probably would not stay at the Travel Inn in Duffield, Virginia. It is, does not, it looks like it's occupied mostly by people that stay by the week. And I saw another guy outside with, um, he had a little dog outside and, and believe me, he did not look like a traveler. And then I saw another guy down at the end of the, the motel. He didn't look like a traveler and m most of the cars I saw parked in the travel in they well we're, let's just say they were pretty cra crappy looking cars they did not look like cars that people would be traveling driving and long um, for long distances i mean there was one or two that weren't bad but for the most of them most part they were older i didn't look at the um tags to see if they were all virginia i didn't i didn't do that it's getting dark now Oh, there's a food country across the street. A lot of the food countries have a subway in it. I see this one does too. So that's pretty uh, pretty cool. But I'm not eating Subway tonight. And this is, a, of course, I'm standing across the street. It's a four-lane highway. I'm not going to eat Subway tonight, though. I'm going to make my sandwich. And now I'm going to walk up the other way. I'd really like to walk back and get a few more, a little bit more video or maybe a few pictures of the travel in, but I, one, I don't want the, whoever the new owners are, to, to, to see me. I know it used to be owned by an Indian fella because I went in there a couple times but his rates were really not good. They were pretty pretty bad and so I remember I just decided you know the rates were so poor that I would just come up here to this um, truck stop and stay because you know that's as good a place as any and and usually I do that anyway. I just stay in my car or whatever I'm driving because it's it's easier. I like it better. I don't have a checkout time. I can leave whatever time I want. The only thing is I don't have a bed and I don't have a shower, but but you know, those are small little those are small little prices to pay little lo little losses. I mean, 
Now, I was listening to a YouTube video the other day, and it said they were saying, um, or, or, you know, of course, I've seen a few YouTube videos. They all say the same thing. You know, get a Planet Fitness membership. Planet Fitness being the big one, I don't know why they don't recommend some of the others. I know there's others like Workout Anytime, Anytime Fitness, Gold's Gym. I don't know anything about those. I know those. I know Gold's Gym's kind of expensive, but the others, I, I don't know. One of the biggest things that happened with me is that most of the places that I went and I traveled there wasn't a planet fitness if i i mean on occasion i would see some place that did have a planet fitness but for the most part if i wanted to go to a planet fitness i had to drive maybe 45 minutes to get to one an hour i mean that's kind of ridiculous and you're not going to do that every day now there's there was a couple times when i was on the road for very long periods of time that yeah I would drive that 45 minutes but I'm not gonna drive 45 minutes every single day for a shower or even every other day that that's too much so you're either left with I don't know not showering not showering showering every day or picking a city or a town that has a Planet Fitness or some other gym where you can shower regularly every day or every other day or whatever regardless of all that and I know that a lot of other people have talked about this too but regardless of all that I still stay clean however of course I do go home but not every two three days I can stay out on the road for two three weeks at a time sometimes a month I've st th this this summer I'm staying out on the road only about two weeks at a time due to the physical therapy doctor's appointments I'm constantly being pulled back. I, I, you know, it's just a just a fact. I, I have to return to North Carolina to, or, or the or Asheville, North Carolina, rather, where the physical therapy and my doctor, where the doctors are. There weren't any in out in the Outer Banks, so I couldn't, I couldn't go there. But anyway, where I actually live. But so I'm staying in my seasonal house with my ex-husband which is not easy that's a very difficult situation to say the least and looks like I'm down here to I don't know if this is a park or I don't know what it is let me go up here and look anyway I'm again I'm already at seven minutes and it started with the old travel in which and it's getting dark which is kind of oh it just says Duffield Industrial Park that's what it is I should have known that there are some trucks over here across the street but like I said and I, I don't know how I got off onto another a conversation or another whatever, another something else on a tangent, but not really a tangent. But like I said, I've been here before and for I have to be not in this area, but I have to be in this area for work. I have to travel to Blackwater, Virginia, which is about 30 miles from here. And there's nothing in Blackwater. There's literally, it is like nothing. This was a little bit closer, and the other closest spot was back to Cumberland Gap, Tennessee, and I don't. And there's no place really to to stay. I think the closest for me would have been about 60 miles, about six, like 55, 60 miles, maybe a little bit further, 70, maybe you know, anywhere 55 to 70 miles back to where I was at this morning, and that's way too far to drive so I opted to once I real, once I knew because I, I when I was first um, given you know 
told I have to come to Blackwater. I didn't know exactly where it was. I had I didn't even map it. I just figured I'll get there and maybe you know hopefully there won't be anything too far. And Duffield is the closest. And thankfully there is a gas 24-hour gas station here I can stay at. It's also a truck stop, so I'm good in that scenario. It's also a very small town. But Duffield, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Duffield is, well, I know it's like close to 20 miles. Ooh, I'm shaking the phone. I know it's about 20 miles from Gate City, Virginia. And then right over the line is Kingsport. So it's about probably 22, 23, maybe 25 now back when I stayed at Walmart this wasn't a big a big deal this was like nothing you know I would just drive back up to I never really liked I never I, I don't know I just never really liked the Walmart in Kingsport I never did I stayed there one time maybe two and I really didn't like it I just You can see the signs right there that say Big Stone Gap, Kingsport, and Bristol. And then Natural Tunnel State Park. Wow, I didn't know Natural Tunnel State Park was um, south. Because this is U.S. Highway 23 south. And I discovered this many years ago. U.S. Highway 23, just by accident, I had just, I hadn't had, I hadn't been driving that long, and, or I'd been driving, but I did, hadn't been, they didn't have, you know, been driving, traveling that long. I had just started, like, maybe, I'd only been traveling maybe two months, and I hadn't been far from where I lived, only, I think I had been maybe to Charlotte, so, I mean, from where I lived, I'd only been... I think I'd been down South Carolina. I'd been to, yeah, I hadn't been that far. I'd only been maybe an hour away, maybe two hours maximum. That was as far as I had been. Now, Gate City is only about two hours from Asheville, North Carolina. But anyway, and at the time, I was in Asheville, North Carolina, briefly taking care of my dad when he got sick. Anyway, so I just, I had just been in a three-car accident developed sleep driving because of that and anyway had bought one car in Charlotte North Carolina bought another car locally that was the car that actually it was a 2002 Ford Taurus and it's the one that now has a, a dead cylinder on it I don't know major engine issues I guess I don't know but anyway I came here and I stopped at this gas station in Duffield not the one I'm gonna stay at tonight but a different one and I asked the guy because I was having trouble with my locks and they weren't um, I don't know they weren't working very well and or one of the locks wasn't working I don't remember I don't remember the deal I think it finally finally it cleared up there's a Hardee's over here definitely not eating that anyway and I asked the guy where the nearest Ford dealer was. And the guy said, actually, it wasn't in Duffield. I think it was, might have been on the edge of Weber City or Gate City. I don't remember. Anyway, the guy tells me he had no idea where the Ford dealer was. And that he had never been farther than Duffield, which was 17 miles away. I was shocked and blown away. I could not believe someone had never been farther than 17 miles from his house. I mean, that was just a, 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 a shock to me. It was, it was really a, a shock. And needless to say, I don't remember what, what the deal was with the car and the lock. I think I, I don't remember. I don't remember. But anyway can't remember if I had I didn't take it to any Ford dealer in Virginia I know that um, didn't take it 
till I got to Michigan. Anyway, that brings me to my my final my final at the end of the story. I discovered it. I had just taken off in a 2002. This was in 2007, so the car was relatively new. It was only five years old. 49,000 miles. That's what I bought it. I bought it with 49,000. Nice car. Putrid green. Didn't like the putrid green, but other than that, not a bad car. So, I take off and I, you know, I take off. And I took off at night, and back then I always drove at night. I, I don't know why, but I, I always drove at night. So, anyway, like I said, that, you know, that stopped at the gas station, whatever. Anyway, and I, for whatever reason, I kept going. U.S. Highway 23 North, and you pick up U.S. Highway 23 North right at the edge of I-26 at Kingsport, Tennessee. You cross over the Virginia line. You stay on U.S. Highway 23 North, and it will take you, it'll go all the way to Michigan. And when I got to Michigan, I, I remember, I got to Michigan. I'd never been before, and I don't remember where I was, but somewhere in Ohio, I think I must have picked up an interstate, because I remember seeing a sign that said, 90 miles to Detroit. And for me, that was like... That was a major milestone for me. My, my my dad worked at Ford Motor Company many, many years ago. Got, before I was born, got laid off. And as a child, when I was a kid, he talked about Detroit a lot. He must have really liked it because he talked about it all the time. Just all the time. And... And I, I, I never thought much of it. I mean, I didn't even pay that much attention to his stories. Now that he's gone, I really wish that I had, but I didn't. Anyway, he talked about Michigan a lot. That was just a big thing. He talked about it all the time. He also talked about uh, Sandusky, Ohio. And after my dad passed, I tried to retrace his steps as much as possible. I went back to Michigan. I went to Sandusky, Ohio for the first time. I traveled out west to California because my dad was in California, worked out there. He worked, he was in Arizona, Nevada. Um, he'd been to the, he talked about the casinos. I mean, it, it, he talked about, and, and I didn't really listen to a lot of what he said, but I did my best to retrace it. Now, the first time that I did this little trek, I actually drove across, I drove across the Mackinac Bridge, picked up U.S. Highway 2 in St. Ignace, and I drove it all the way to Washington State, and I didn't go all the way to California the first time. It wasn't until later, I actually, when I went to California, I actually picked up I-10 in Florida and took I-10 all the way to California. But, and then on the way back, it dawned on me, because I kept wondering, what route did he take to get to California, you know? I wondered, I mean, what route did he take? Because it was pre-interstate. And I know he didn't take U.S. Highway 2, because that's a long way. St. Ignatius is a long way from Detroit. So, and traveling that direction, you go, of course, to Wisconsin, Minnesota, the Dakotas. You know, it's a long drive. But, of course, it doesn't matter. It's a long drive, period. But I couldn't figure out which route he took. And then finally, uh, when I was coming back, and I think this was on my second trip to California, I realized that more than likely... He took Route 66 because when he worked in Detroit and he worked out in California, it was before Route 66 was decommissioned. And I realized, wow, that is the route he took. And because uh, naturally, because Detroit's not that far from, I think it's only about a two-hour drive from Chicago. So he more than likely, I don't know which, I don't know, he, Route 66 is not in Michigan, so I don't know what route he took to pick up Route 66. Don't know. Probably just got a map out and found something and, and you know, that brought him into Chicago and got him where he wanted to go. But, but I, it, it, for me, that was a very emotional time, but it was also very cathartic 
very uh, healing. Anyway, the mosquitoes are out really bad here, and I'm going to walk back to my car now because I decided to come out here, take a... Ooh, shoot. Sorry, sorry. I, I'm trying... There's mosquitoes and bugs landing on my back, and wow. Thankfully, it's not too hot tonight, so... Virginia, it's not going to be that hot tonight, so I can keep my windows up. And of course, it's 9 o'clock. It's probably after 9. I'm having to go to the bathroom pretty bad, but I can hopefully throw together my bedding. I can throw together my comforter and my bedding real quick and get my get get that all ready and head down to the truck stop because I got to go to the bathroom and there's really not any place else I want to go. Of course, there is a food city. I mean, food city, food country right across the street and I could go in there, see if there's any thing, you know, a little snack or whatever, but I may not. I don't know. It's going to depend. Okay, I'm almost down to where I need to be. I got just a little ways to go. Anyway, I have talked probably too long. I have talked 20 minutes about, well, I don't know, really, I guess nothing. Nothing that's of any interest. I don't know. I don't know if it's interesting to other people or not. Um, I, I don't know. But I decided instead of sitting in front of the camera and, you know, talking and yapping away, I would do it this way. Anyway, that said, I wanted to get a few more pictures and a little bit more of the travel in but you know I heard some people out there yelling and yelling and screaming and I decided eh, I don't think that's a really good place to to stay I, you know and I've been here before and it was totally empty so now obviously they just allow people to live there and I, I know that that's not that is not something that I would want to do so so if you listen to this video and you listen to it all the way through, I don't know if you will. I know some people are, are I think, have listened to my videos all the way through and had some really nasty comments and then others don't. But anyway, drive the extra 25 miles down to Kingsport. You'll find a, a much better option for motel. I'm sure comfort in, days in, quality. Um, I think... Now, Norton is probably about another hour up the road. And there may be, um, I think there's also Wise, which I'm not sure. It's been a long time since I've been through here. Um, there may be other motels closer. But whatever you do, don't stay at the Travel Inn. I mean, I, I just didn't, I did not like it. I mean, now, I noticed there looks to be a lot of... Um, there were, from, when you first go in, it looks empty. It looks like there's nobody there. You have to drive around the back, and I drove around the back because that's where I used to park at night and, and sometimes sleep because there was nobody at this motel. Maybe a few people, but nothing to write home about. I, he would get a few over the weekend, but that was it. But now it looks like all the ones on the back side are just taken up by people that live there. And there may be a few on the front that are not. And so I suppose if someone did stay there, they'd probably, they, I'm guessing, I don't know, they might get a room on the front, which would be not where the everyday people or the weekly people live. But I'm telling you, I uh, would not want to live in a motel. However, Living in a motel is better than having no place to live. Absolutely. I am at 23 minutes now, and I'm at my car, and I am ready to... It's dark, as you can see. So I'm going to end this video. I will wrap up a, a little bit later. Hi, I'm at my last stop now, and I'm going to conclude this video. I still need to go inside the store get myself something to drink, um, make my sandwich, eat, and I'm going to watch a movie. I've already made my bed. I already did that. I did that down. I was 
at a Dollar General store, and I um, did. The, I got everything ready, but I didn't make my sandwich. I was having to go to the bathroom too bad, and then I came here, and I, anyway, ended up trying to pull my videos together and didn't do that. I have three videos to pull together. I ended up with three videos. The first video being um, Tennessee Highway 70 headed to Blackwater, Virginia. When I started, I didn't know where I was going to be. I didn't know where I was headed. It just turned out that my bosses called me and told me to go to Blackwater, Virginia to look at some property. So that's basically where I'm at now. Then the second video, it ended up being very long. I made a very long vid video at the Duff Pat Overlook and the Panoramic Lane um, Overlook. Anyway, so that's where I'm at on that. And then the last one I did at the Travel Inn, and I, I continued to probably talk about a lot of stuff that people may not be interested in in this video but whatever you're if you watched all the way through you're at the end of the video anyway um so anyway i hope everyone has a good week god good night god bless peace